Welcome to MSU Inside Out. I'm Ariel Ko. And I'm Autumn Roll. And this is our last show of the semester, unfortunately. Unfortunately, we have to say goodbye. It's been like a great year, though. I had so much fun. Hectic, on the show. but. Yes. Great. But a great, great year, one. yeah. And we just came out of Thanksgiving break. So, how was your Thanksgiving break? You know, for the first time in years, I haven't had turkey and ham on thanks this Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So, that was a bit strange for me, but. Other than that, it was a nice holiday, well-deserved break. Yeah, I think like one of the best parts of Thanksgiving is the leftovers and then mm -hmm. Black Friday and then Cyber Monday. Now you're reminding me what I missed. Oh no! <laughs> what about you, Lane? What, what was your Thanksgiving like? Well, I had some plans, but they kind of fell through a little bit. But at the end of the day, I still got lots of leftover turkey, so it was, it was a good time. There was no shopping though. I am not a shopper. It was very tempting on Cyber Monday to buy stuff online, mm -hmm. but I, I didn't take any of the deals. I didn't take the bait. No, so no Black Friday shopping for you? None at all. I'm not putting up with like crazy amounts of people in one place. That's just not for me. That's why they have online shopping. It is, but <laughs> by the time I got to Cyber Monday, I was a little, uh, the funds were running a little thin. So okay. 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 It didn't quite well, at happen. least you saved money. I did. I did. At the end of the day, I saved my money my own way. Yeah. That's the bright side. <laughs> Thanksgiving break is a time to spend with family, but not everyone is fortunate enough to get that opportunity. Alex Coleman spent time with Minot families who take in students who can't make it home for the holidays. Moving away from home for the first time can be tough, especially for student athletes like Mariah Payne, who came to America from Australia. By the time they're done with school and work, I'm, I'm asleep. It's like four in the morning here. So it's, we don't really get, time to talk to each other and when we do it's only for a small amount of time. It takes time but eventually they form a new family with peers. Definitely something you have to adjust to and kind of lean on your teammates and like support from around here for. For the Willies, they take pride in making students and athletes feel like part of a family. It's just good to meet these kids and, and to be there for them. It's um, I think one of the most important things of the holidays is to reach out to those kids like that. Having a support system student athletes can rely on makes being away from family a little bit easier. Sometimes just like having someone outside the team and somebody who is just there to listen is like I couldn't imagine not having that. This year the Willie family will be opening up their home to 16 student athletes. This tradition that we do in my family and I started it with all the the athletes is to um, go around the room and, and ask them what they're thankful for this year. And so we'll do that tradition again this year. And it was kind of a neat thing for all of the kids to hear what they're thankful for and, and that they were thankful for us and our family. That was kind of neat. Even if it's just for one day, these students will have friends around the community to be thankful for. Mile High Climb Extension is finally coming to an end tomorrow. Josh Sather reminds us of the objective. You have to climb 150 times, 100 on the auto belay, 50 anywhere else on the wall. It's designed to get people to come in here, stay fit, and try to conquer their fear of heights. The Mile High Climb is more than just a challenge. Jared Sublett tells us about the prize offered for those who complete it. For the Mile High, you win a t-shirt that says Mile High Club. I don't know, that's pretty appealing to me. It's kind of funny. Sather has high hopes for the number of people who will complete the challenge this year. Right now we have 26 people participating and I'm hoping, thinking that we're going to get at least 12 to 13 people to finish. Just a reminder that the final day to climb for the mile high is tomorrow. Prom season, Christmas and New Year's are all here. Ariel Coe tells us which store to go to in order to put your best foot forward. 
For 32 years, people from all over North Dakota have traveled all the way to Minot just to visit Fiance's Bridal Boutique. Although the name might give you the impression that this 10,000 square feet emporium is exclusively a bridal store, it actually offers much more. Owner Deb Harris describes what her store has to offer. On the second level, we have about 700 wedding gowns from everything from 100 to 5,000. On our main level, street level that you walk into, we have bridesmaids, tuxedo rentals, and suits that you can purchase. And our lower level, we have, as you can see here, about 800 to 1,000 prom formals or grads for Canadians um, on the lower level. During the season of September and October, we actually have Halloween costumes down here for adults. Customers can also find rental pieces like chandeliers, glass globes, and other decorative items at Fiancé. For MSU Inside Out, I'm Ariel Cole. Fiancé Bridal is located in downtown Minot. The Sports Splurge finished up its second season on Channel 19, but the time and effort put into a show is more than you may think. Kale Borner tells us what it takes. If you're familiar with Inside Out, this may look like the regular set, but with a desk change, a shift of chairs and tables, and color lighting, it transforms into the sports splurge. Minot State broadcast students Leif Bakken and Anthony Battle started the show last spring and feel good about how things have been going, especially with their newest addition to the show. But it wouldn't be enough to stop the Marauders from winning 81. We've uh, added new things called the Road to Minot. Uh, it's a new piece that I've added where we interview an athlete and we kind of talk to him and ask them uh, a little bit about how they came to Minot. You know, injuries, struggles, family problems, all that uh, stuff is involved in the road to Minot as well. So it's a, a big interview that we have. Uh, they're pre-recorded and uh, it's probably my favorite part of the show is the road to Minot now. The road to Minot was a big hit with the hosts, crews, and viewers. Anthony's favorite from this season is episode three's guest. Probably go with Shane Williams Jr. because he had such a compelling story. His story was really, his story, was, it hits you in the heart and it kind of gets you in the feels a little bit. <laughs> I came here to watch sports, not feel. But uh, yeah, so I think that Shane Williams Jr. is probably my favorite um, overall and he's a good friend of mine as well. Though season two is over, the hosts are already getting ready for season three, coming January 2017. For MSU Inside Out, I'm Cale Borner. If you missed an episode, don't worry. You can watch all of Season 1 and 2 on the Sports Splurge Facebook page. Winter has officially set in, but we can take the opportunity to look back at some fun times at a Magicon 2016. Gemma Biasetto has more. We finally got our Magicon passes. Let's go check a check lick lick. <laughs> Let's go check it out! We finally got our... Bleh, 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 bleh. We finally got our passes to 2016 Imagicon. Let's go take a look. This is one of probably like the most fun toys that I've seen around, well, not toys, lightsaber, but it even, you've got the whole sound effects and yep, everything. Yeah, everything. Push the button once. Hold it in. Hold the button in for a second. It turns off, now push it again. And turns off. There you go. And it's back on. Just gonna... Yep, go ahead. You can't really damage that thing. And did it... Did you... I didn't make, make this, this myself. This is it? actually from Ultra Sabers. Okay. It's one of their uh, custom blades. It's actually a dueling blade, so you can actually duel with it. It's not going to break. The actual blade is just this is a carb carbonate blade, so it's there's there's nothing in here, so you can actually duel with that. It's made to bend and whatnot. That is neat. Have you dueled with anyone yet? Yep. There's been a few duels and stuff like that. Not too many around here, but there's some actual um, Jedi dueling clubs up in Winnipeg and whatnot. So. Yep. That is super exciting. I love that. That's 
probably my favorite part. <laughs> Black, what's your name again? I'm sorry, I cannot remember. Black War Draymond. And why did you choose to be him? Uh, I really like Digimon, and he's like one of my favorite Digimon, and he's like, I think he's really overpowered, and he's like just really, really strong, so he's one of my favorite one to choose. And how long did it take you to put all this together? Uh, it, it probably took like a couple of months on and off, and then we finally finished it like a couple hours ago. I, I know, like you were saying over here, you guys still smell like spray paint and all sorts of things. Yeah, just like I just did my helm and my feet and stuff today, so it, it, it took a lot of time. And let's move on to the other side. Can you tell your name to all of our viewers over there? Character is Omnimon. Okay, well, one more time. <laughs> Omnimon from the series Digimon. Perfect, and you obviously have a lot of work put into your costume as well. Did it take you the same amount of time as him? Or? Yes, months uh, off and on, long hours, it took a while. And um, what was like the hardest part of putting all this together? Because I know there's some easier parts and then there's also the one part where you just keep working at it and it's never perfect, but did you seem to find anything like that? The hardest part for this costume was the arm cannon and the gray sword. And would you say that was the part that took the longest out of everything, hey everyone, just for watching by far. If you want to help yes, figuring more out how to put it all together and Patreon just getting it to work. That, that was there. a little and bit of a challenge. To to um, and then I know you guys are walking around, and thanks again kind of having a, a bit of a hard people. time walking around. What What is like the best or worst part about that? Uh, there's really no best part about it. We just move really slow. But I mean, it. I mean, that's the best we can do, you know, to make. Well, to get the actual characteristic of the character. So, I mean, we have to make do what we got. Got to do what you got to do at a Magicon, right? Yeah. And you guys are in the costume contest, which is why you guys made them, right? Yes, yeah, so we're doing the, the group. We're doing the group. Oh, so you had the, the little ones around, right? Uh, yeah, they're, doing, they're actually doing their individuals. Oh, okay. So, where are your, so it's just the group that you? Yeah. Perfect, perfect. And what do you think, how do you think your chances are looking over here? I, I think we're I think I think we had a really good chance. Right, there's some pretty good costumes out here and stuff, but you know I, th I think we did it pretty good on our so you know best man win. My eye open because I know that one person is gonna come through and, and just have like an amazing cosplay. So I'm I'm just keeping my eye open. Well I don't know you guys look pretty spectacular to me, but um, thanks for joining us and interviewing. I know you guys were stopping to take pictures along the way, but um, have fun out there. I hope you guys win. Thank you, Gemma, for the great memories. So, Ariel, do you have any great memories from this semester? Yes, here on MSU Inside Out. All here? <laughs> yes, all here. All here. Well, I mean, it's been a fun time, and I'm a little sad to see the, the show end this semester. Yeah, me too, but it's got to happen eventually, right? <laughs> eventually, eventually. All right, so today um, joining us is Do President Dr. <coughs> Stephen Shirley. Uh, everyone on campus is extremely busy this time of the year, but perhaps the person with the most hectic schedule is our president. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing just fine. Thank you very much. Uh, it's an honor to be here and a pleasure to be on set this afternoon. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much for joining us on our show. Thank you for the invitation. How has the school year been so far here at MSU? It's been a busy year. Uh, it's already uh, December now and mm -hmm. uh, the semester is flying by and pretty soon we'll be into finals week. So yeah. it's, it's amazing how quickly it, it ends up uh, going. But it's, it's really been a, a good year. It's been a good year for the university and we're yes. looking forward to a new calendar year and get into the new semester here pretty soon. Absolutely. Um, and it must have been a very busy week for you too because of the winter storm that hit Minot uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Yeah. So what was it like for you to make the decisions um, to, to decide to cancel school? 
It's, uh, it's certainly been a unique uh, week this week with the, with the amount of snow that we had and the storm that we had here in Minot. And uh, I think we got close to 20 inches of snow, which uh, is obviously in a 72-hour period. It's a tremendous amount of snowfall yes, for Minot. Yes. Uh, we, we did cancel classes Tuesday evening. We canceled all of our activities and events on Tuesday evening mm -hmm. and then ultimately ended up canceling school yesterday. Classes and, and the campus was closed. Mm -hmm. uh, Tuesday at late afternoon, it, certainly there, there became some travel issues. Mm -hmm. uh, visibility was an issue. There were some issues with uh, no travel being advised and so forth. And so Tuesday evening, it really was more about the, the visibility and the travel and some of those kind of precautions that we really have to be careful with. Mm -hmm. uh, and then yesterday uh, the decision to close was really focused more on uh, just the volume of snow kind of the shoveling out getting the campus ready mm -hmm. um, it was one of those situations that the city was still trying to deal with and still is trying to deal with getting all the roads cleared and mm -hmm. so forth and so part of it is trying to keep that extra traffic off the uh, off the roads as well and and off of campus so that we're able to get the campus ready to get back today on Thursday. And so a lot of decisions that go into that. There was obviously a lot of other large organizations in the community that, that closed down with uh, the public schools were closed, yeah. uh, the private schools, all of the surrounding uh, K-12 districts were closed around us. Mm -hmm. um, other colleges in the region were closed. Mm -hmm. So it really at, at some point became a uh, not a terribly difficult decision. And again, a lot of that just came back to the volume of snow that we were dealing with. Okay, okay. So what 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 is the decision between <coughs> Closing the school and not closing the school. Yeah, you know, we, we get together the the myself and and the, the vice presidents, our vice president for academic affairs and student affairs, and and uh, uh, we, we uh, the vice president for finance who oversees the facility side of things and some of our other administrators. And we really have to look at uh, I, there, there, there's the class issue. I mean, we're, we're we're eliminating classes, but there's a lot of other issues that go into that as well. We've got to think about our students that are in the residence halls here yeah. on campus. We've got to make sure that dining di dining services are open. Stay We've open. got to make sure our our facilities folks are out there, you know, in, in a position to be able to clear the campus mm -hmm. and run all of their equipment and so forth. Mm -hmm. So it, it's more that to meets the eye than mm -hmm. just simply the, the classes themselves. So there's really quite a lot when you get to an organization this size and the size of the physical plant that we have and all of the, not just the students, but also the faculty and the staff. Mm -hmm. And then we also have students, we've got students up on the Minot Air Force Base, we've got students down in Bismarck. Mm -hmm. Both of those locations had already closed. Mm -hmm. So there, there's a lot that really ultimately goes into the decision. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And traveling will be very dangerous too if students were to go all the way to Minot Air Force Base. Exactly. There was there was those issues as well with students going back and forth and, and again the roads yesterday really out of, once you got out of town there was a lot of ice compacted roads and, and some dangerous travel still yesterday as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, and I'm sure like a lot of students were very happy that there was a snow day coming up, but um, the campus has to pick that up. Yeah, you bet. We, we don't like to do that, and, and I think this is my third year here at Minot State. I believe that's the first time in the three years that we've, we've canceled uh, class mm -hmm. um, for, for weather-related issues. So it's certainly something we hope doesn't happen very often, but sometimes Mother Nature uh, rules the day, and we have to go, go with the, with, go with the with weather the that, we're, exactly, that we're handed. Exactly, and um, today I saw that the roads were better all around campus um, there is no more snow so it was yeah. good that we had that time yeah and I really want to give a, a, a real positive shout out to all of our facilities folks there was a lot of folks here behind the scenes that were working early early in the morning Tuesday morning Wednesday morning this morning making sure that our our parking lots and you know sidewalks and all those things were cleared so th those folks really did a great job and I want to make sure to give them public credit as well yeah absolutely yeah. Um, on the more happier note yeah so enrollment numbers are up yeah in msu that's right so what steps did msu take for that to happen yeah our enrollment uh we'd struggled with some enrollment issues over the last few years and and uh, we'd been kind of on a, on a trend uh going really kind of the wrong way we we started to level that off last year and now this fall for the first time in six years our enrollment is up and so we're very excited about that and and uh our our new incoming freshman numbers are up our new graduate students are up our new transfer students are up and our overall enrollment enrollment is up. So mm -hmm. it really across the board, all of our, our uh, numbers were going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. uh, we've put in place some new initiatives, some new programs. We've been working 
really particularly on our kind of this part of North Dakota in our in our backyard here in Minot and throughout the region to really ensure that students high school students junior seniors really know uh, about all that Minot State University has to offer and the academic programming that we have to offer and make sure that students are really looking at Minot State as a first viable option for their college uh, careers mm -hmm. and so it was positive to see those numbers up and and uh, we just had a campus preview day about two weeks ago we had a uh, about 50 high school students here on a Saturday morning a couple Saturdays ago and and it was fun to meet with them and their families and they're all potentially new students for next year as well and so we're continuing now we're really focused on next fall already in the fall of 2017 and, and working on on those numbers as well so uh, okay. we're looking uh, uh, we're excited about the future and, and continuing to move that enrollment uh, in the positive direction okay so do you have any new marketing ideas or initiatives that will help drive the enrollment numbers up again for next fall? Yeah, and we, you know, we've had a number of conversations. We've had a, a, some small work groups across campus that are working on some things related to, to both uh, recruiting new students to Minot State University, to efforts that we're doing to retain our current students that we have here at Minot State to ensure they're being successful. And then also looking at what we can do to increase our numbers of transfer students, students that might transfer in after their sophomore or junior yes, year. Yes. And you were telling me you transferred yes, a couple of years yes. ago. And, and so certainly that's an important uh, yes. demographic mm -hmm. as well for us and so um, we've, we've added some new partnerships with other colleges in the region two-year colleges where students can do their first two years at one of the community colleges mm -hmm. in North Dakota and then transfer here so it's kind of an all of the above strategy yeah that's that's great I mean I know that if there is a partnership transferring makes things smoother easier you and bet. then it makes my state university a better option absolutely yep, yep. okay that sounds yeah. great I'm yeah. happy that the enrollment numbers are going to go out this definitely is yeah. a great school to come to <laughs> Thank you for saying that. I think so as well. <laughs> I like the professors here are great. Absolutely, yes. So, Especially Professor Roberts here in yeah, this professor, area, right? We yeah. better give him a shout out here as well. <laughs> <laughs> so what was it like? Um, um, this year, it was also a hard year because of the budget cuts sure, yeah. that came in. So what was it like dealing with the budget cuts this year? Yeah, certainly there's been some challenges for all state agencies in North Dakota. All public entities have been required to do a couple of things. Mm -hmm. We've had a couple of uh, what they call allotments, which are, are budget reductions, budget mm -hmm. cuts. And then we've also been asked to reduce our budgets for this upcoming uh biennium the next two-year cycle that we're moving into uh, the governor will give his address next week we'll have the governor's budget address next week in Bismarck and then uh, we'll be moving into the legislative session in January and so we're, we're kind of getting ready for for that process to begin as well and and that's uh, you know that's the reality of being a public agency and a public state supported university like Minot yes, State yes. is we we're, we're dependent on the state for a lot of our, our resources and mm -hmm. and so forth so we know that that's part of doing business as well so um, I think we've gotten through those challenges as about as well as, as we could have yeah. so far and mm -hmm. uh, you know one of our main priorities has been to make sure it hasn't um, negatively impacted our students mm -hmm. or the student experience we have not cut any academic programs or any mm -hmm. academic offerings so um, I think at the end of the day we've we've done everything we can to continue to, uh, the mission of Minot State University without reducing opportunities for our students okay so what else um, <coughs> how else uh, what else is in store for the next budget cut well, uh, we'll find out what happens once the legislature reconvenes in January and they'll meet throughout the spring and, and obviously that'll give us a lot of directive after that. But uh, that process will take some number of months and, and we'll work through the legislative processes as they normally are. 2017 is going to be a busy year as well. We've got our, our next uh, comprehensive accreditation visit coming next fall. Uh, it's about 10 months off and, yeah. and folks throughout the campus have been working and getting ready for that. Um, that activity only happens once every 10 years, so that's really a big process for the the university mm -hmm. and uh, and we're in the midst of that right now and and so I want to recognize that process as well and all the work that's gone into that so far so that's going to be a big part of two 2017 excuse me as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right thank you so you much bet. that I mean I, I know that budget cuts must be really hard but so far it's been going really smoothly and thank you so much for all your hard work to make this transition as smooth as possible thank you I appreciate it thank you very much okay so um, next up on MSU inside out MSU nursing students will be giving a presentation about a virus students should be aware of MSU Beaver sports teams are on the road the update on this week's Beaver action with Anthony Battle My cold heart, it's going to get a little bit chilly next week. More coming up on MSU Inside Out. 
Good job. All right, thanks. Thank you. Nice having you. All American Trophies for all your screen printing and embroidery needs. Located on South Broadway. Art Main, women's clothing, accessories, and art supplies. Located at 13th Main Street, South Minot. Badlands Grill, featuring steak, seafood, chicken, pasta, and classic comfort food. At Badlands, everyone is welcome. Buffalo Wings and Rings, the sports restaurant experience where everyone is a VIP. B, W, and R goes way beyond just Buffalo Wings. Buffalo Wild Wings, wings, beer, and sports. Located on South Broadway across from Walmart. Center for Extended Learning, reaching across the state of North Dakota and beyond. The Minot State University Center for Extended Learning empowers you to choose your educational path. Digital Office Center, technology solutions for every business need. Located in Minot and Bismarck. El Azteca, authentic Mexican cuisine, fresh and fast. Beyonce Bridal, located in downtown Minot, and now you can shop online. Happy Joe's Pizza and Ice Cream. Good times to be together. iHeart Media, providing multi-platform advertising and marketing opportunities for partners and world-class entertainment for listeners. Jacobson Music, a family-owned music business with three retail locations in Dickinson, Bismarck, and Minot. KCJB 910 AM, Minot's news and information station. KIZZ FM, Z94, Minot's only station for today's hit music. KRRZ 1390 AM, Minot's classic hits. KXMA Mix 99.9, Minot's best music mix. KYYZ FM 97 Kicks, today's hot new country. KZTR FM 105.3, The Fox, Minot's rock station. MSU Beaver Hockey. Visit us online at msubeaverhockey.com or on Facebook and Twitter. MSU Athletics, NCAA Division II, promoting good character and a positive experience. Red Rising. MSU Art Department, stimulating creativity campus-wide by providing exhibits and art events. MSU's Theater Department, offering the highest quality of entertainment at Minot State. Enjoy. We'll see you at the theater. Midwest Oil Jobs brings employers, retailers, and other professionals from the Midwest to connect under one roof. Minot Plumbing, from winter chills through the dog days of summer. Our primary goal at Minot Plumbing and Heating is to keep your home comfortable for you and your family. Pepsi, the local Pepsi Cola bottling company serving the North Dakota areas in Minot, Dickinson, Devil's Lake, and Botano. Peter Pit, fresh thinking, healthy eating, located on South Broadway. Qdoba, easy, on time, full of flavor. Red Green, Minot State's official student run newspaper. Spicy Pie, pizza, grinders, beer, located at Beaver Ridge Plaza. Taco John's. Offering fresh tacos, burritos, nachos, and breakfast. Mixing Mexican and Western flavor. Watney Realtors, full-service real estate agencies handling residential, commercial, and investment properties. You can visit them online at MinotHomes.com. Watney Realtors, Cary Montoya, located on Northwest Broadway. Welcome back to MSU Inside Out. Most of us would do anything for the ones we love, but what if I told you you weren't doing enough? The human papillomavirus, or HPV, is affecting a growing number of people. Here with us is Victoria and Jessica Holman, two MSU nursing students, who is hosting a HPV presentation tonight. Thank you girls for joining us. Thanks for having us. So this presentation tonight is going to be exciting, yes. but first let's tell the viewers exactly what is HPV, Victoria. So like you said, HPV is short for human papillomavirus, and it's a group of 150 viruses that can cause anything from genital warts to cancer, especially cervical cancer. It's transmitted by intimate skin-to-skin -skin contact during oral, anal, or vaginal sex, and it's the most common STD. Wow. Wow. So many people are under the impression that HPV is just an STD and can be cured with medication or a few trips to the doctor. But I've heard it's a silent killer. Can you explain a little bit more about that, Jessica? Yes. Um, what makes HPV so important and so much more than an STD is because it causes so many different types of cancers, including vaginal, anal, penile, throat, and um, even cervical cancer. Mm -hmm as well as many others that I didn't mention. Uh, HPV is cancer is the only cancer that is uh, vaccine preventable, so you can get a vaccine for it. Okay. Um, it affects both men and women, and uh, it, as Victoria mentioned, it is the most common STD. Wow. 
Wow. So like you said, it affects both men and women, but usually people only talk about it in women. Yes. And how would men or and women um, know that if they have HPV or have any signs or symptoms that they should go get checked out by a doctor? So one that both men and women can show one of the signs is genital warts. And these are just small bumps in the genital area. Um, they can be small or large, raised or flat, and sometimes they're shaped like a cauliflower. In women, cervical cancer is difficult to detect until it's in the later stages. And it's very important for women to receive regular screenings because you can see if the illness is there before it's advanced and possibly before it's even cancerous. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very important for both men and women to receive regular screenings. Okay, so today at 6 p.m. you guys are showing a 90-minute presentation mm -hmm. titled Someone someone you love, the HPV epidemic. Yes. Before I ask you my next question, I'm curious uh, about where you guys got the name from. Can you tell me a little bit about that? It's actually the DVD itself okay. um, that we're showing, the documentary, okay. is titled that. Okay. So that's where we got the name from. All right, and what makes HPV an epidemic? HPV is an epidemic because it affects three out of four sexually active individuals at some point in their lives. Wow. Um, 79 million people in the U.S. are affected by HPV um, alone. And then uh, also there's 4,000 deaths annually from HPV. And HPV-related cancer, you'll get about 27,000. Uh, men and women will get about 27,000 cases a year wow. of HPV-related cancer. Wow. Yeah, so That's some alarming statistics. Yeah. <laughs> Very alarming. And I'm curious as to how come we, I mean, there's not a lot of people that know about it. You just... HPV it, is marketed yeah. as an STD, a sexually transmitted yeah. disease. So there's a very large stigma attached to that. The way we're marketing it is cancer prevention. Okay. The Gardasil vaccine does vaccinate against different strains of HPV that can guard you against these types of cancers. So it's just the marketing and yes. STD. Like you said, people tend to, oh, STD, they, they dismiss shy away from it. it. Yes. Right. Versus cancer, people tend to listen like, mm -hmm. okay, how can I prevent this? And it's very common. So it's something that you can talk about in everyday life. It's yeah. very common. Three out of four people. It's an alarming statistic. It really is alarming. Mm -hmm. So. I thank you guys for thinking of that switch oh. in marketing. <laughs> yes. um, my next question for you guys, after the presentation, there's going to be a um, question and answer panel. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit more about the people who are going to be sitting on this panel, a little bit of background information? Mm -hmm. So our first panelist is Dr. Wigway, who is the infectious disease doctor at Trinity Hospital here in Minot. And he helps coordinate treatment of illnesses caused by microorganisms such as tuberculosis, pneumonia, wound infections. And uh, he received his degree from the University of Lagos in his home country of Nigeria. And he completed his residency and in infectious disease fellowship at the University of Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania. Okay. Second is Dr. <laughs> Billings, who's an OB at Trinity. He's chief of surgery, as well as the head of the OB department. He served 24 years in the Air Force. And last is Lacey McNichols. She's a nursing alumni from Minot State. She graduated in 2007 and she's been working for First District Health Unit for seven years. Okay, and an MSU alumna. Yep. And she's now the immunization coordinator there. Yes. Okay. So. All right, and then at this presentation, students will be able to get their first round of vaccines. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that they need to bring or anything that they should know before they yes. get this vaccine? Thank you for asking. Um, they need to bring a photo ID, $21, and an insurance card if they have insurance. Also, people who cannot get this vaccine today are anyone over the ages of 26, um, pregnant women, and then anyone who's severely ill. Not okay. just a, a common sickness, but severely ill. So the cold is fine? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. cold is fine. Alrighty. So yeah. you guys heard that? <laughs> Go out and get your vaccine. <laughs> yes. Now, this is a, a really good project that you guys have brought to Minot State. Mm -hmm. How did you guys come about, you know, or thinking about bringing this? to Minot State so, and allowing the students to have this. In the nursing program, the nursing students have to create a target-based population research project. And when we started thinking about ours, we were approached with an anonymous grant to market HPV here in Minot. And this was marketed in Dickinson as in Bismarck as well. Yep. And in order to bring it to Minot, they wanted our help. Okay. And so that, uh, our funding came from this grant, and we marketed to the entire Minot State University community. Okay. 
So you guys got a grant in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thought of bringing it. Well, that's that's excellent. Anything else you guys would like to add? 6 p.m. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the presentation. So I have a little bit more information on that for you guys. It is tonight at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. It's in the conference room on the third floor in the student center. There's going to be free food. Yes. <laughs> yes. Free food back and vaccines will be available. And then you told me something about door, door prizes. prizes. Yes. I think over $300. Over $300. Worth. Yes. Can you give us a sneak peek on... Oh man, there's uh, gift cards to Ruby Tuesdays. Uh, we have gift cards to Marketplace. We have blankets and MSU shirts, so apparel. Mm -hmm. um, anything else you can think we of? Have oh, some splash passes. Yeah, splash, splash town passes. passes. Yeah. Um, and just different uh, certificates for restaurants around the city. Yep. Alrighty, so. well, thank you guys so much for joining us. Thanks and you guys, you. 6 p.m. at the conference center in the student center. Third floor. Third floor, <laughs> yes, third floor. Standing by is Tori Saray, a, a prominent figure in the broadcasting department who has brought so much funds into the department. Standing by with her is Leaf. Thanks, Autumn. I'm standing here with local designer and vlogger and MSU student Tori Saray. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thanks for having me. So we just want to talk about uh, you've got your pop-up shop coming up tomorrow and along with some uh, vlogging things and designer things. I expect we'll see all that tomorrow. What's this event all about? So this is another Creative Social Hour event and the Creative Social Hour event is um, a place where creatives come to connect and there's going to be live painting, uh, musicians, and then this time we'll have student um, vendors um, selling their artwork and also um, handmade goods. What brought up this idea? I mean, this is kind of a new one. You've been doing your creative social hour, but this is kind of new and it's going to be on campus this time. Um, I am in the process of creating my own fashion line and fashion business. So I'm making, I make um, handmade fashion accessories and I do upcycled uh, vintage goods. So this choker will be on sale tomorrow as well as, as, well as many other things. So what got you started in the design and the vlogging? I mean, you've been doing a lot of vlogs with lots of stuff in the department with the broadcasters, but uh, have you been doing that with your designing as well? I've been designing ever since high school. Um, I sketch everything out and create the masterpiece while my grandma does the seamstress work. Um, but I incorporate vlogging to showcase my designs and also help out my video editing skills. So what's your favorite part of all of this with the vlogging and the designs? I love seeing um, people's reactions and being able to collaborate with others. Um, I work with different photographers as well as um, models and other creative people in the area. So I imagine when you're doing all these things, it's kind of tough to keep work balanced along with this and school. So how do you keep everything even and, uh, and uh, stay tuned into everything? I really enjoy being busy. Um, if I'm busy, I know I'm productive. Um, my planner is my best friend and also um, coffee. Coffee is my best friend as well. My second best friend. <laughs> do you have any future plans with your designs or with this vlog? Like how much further do you want to take this? I want to be able to have pop-up shops in other locations, um, in cafes, in other stores, and also um, branch out with my online store as well. So the event is tomorrow here at the dam. What times can we uh, be seeing you and other creative social people here? Um, the event is from 11 to 5. From 12 to 3, there will be entertainment. Um, a broadcasting student, Keith, will also be presenting as well. So check him out. All right. You heard it here that the uh, pop-up shop will be coming up tomorrow here at the dam. Thank you so much, Tori Sere. And as she was talking, we've got Keith Ailes with us, and he has quite the story, and he will be presenting his story once again after his reci senior recital. Keith, tell us a little bit more about uh, the event you've got coming up. Yeah, I just came sliding in here. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, my event was supposed to be um, last night, actually, but due to Mother Nature and the little blizzard that we got, we had to postpone it to uh, next Tuesday. Uh, 6 30 p.m. It's gonna be at the Ann Nicole Nelson Hall over in Old Main and yeah my presentation it's gonna be um, my senior project which is a documentary I made last year kind of about uh, my life story and my family's battle with multiple sclerosis and uh, just kind of finding my love for 
for filmmaking is going to be the whole presentation. It's going to be from the, you know, t telling my story um, about my process getting here to Minot State, playing baseball here, and just kind of some of the adversities that I've faced and how it's kind of got me to uh, playing with cameras and getting paid for it. So it's, uh, I got some good stuff. Is everybody invited, students, the public, uh, the state of North Dakota? Who's going to show up to this thing? Um, everyone's invited. It's going to be a free event for all, all ages, anyone who wants to come hear it. And um, you know, I'm really excited. There's going to be some folks from the athletic department, um, local MS chapter folks are going to be there. And then, uh, you know, basically anyone who's willing to show up, I, you know, I kind of have a message for everybody. And that message, I got to uh, hear your message, and it's a very touching message. And what what's your goal with this message? Like, is it to inspire? Is it to make people think a little bit? What What's the ultimate goal? Um, all the above. You know, my message is for people to look at life a little bit differently. And, you know, through uh, adversities that everyone faces, you know, I'm not the only one who's faced adversities in life. You know, everyone has. And it's kind of my message for people is for... Um, you know, to use these hardships and these tough times to kind of look at life in a in a better way. And you know, um, through everything that I've faced and everything that I've gone through, it's it's led me to a positive path. And that, that's the main message that I want other people to see and other people to follow and maybe open their eyes to some different things. Awesome, sounds great, Keith. Well, that'll be next uh, Tuesday in Ann Nicole Nelson, the big facility. Hope we, hopefully we can fill it up, and hopefully we can uh, fill up the dam tomorrow as well with the pop-up shop with Tori Saray. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Tori. And back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Leaf. It's great to hear from students in our department. Coming up on MSU Inside Out, our Beavers are on the road this week. Find out who they face in this week's sports with Anthony. The snow has come back with a vengeance. Find out more on this week's weather forecast. The holidays are finally here and the cast has a lot planned. All this and more coming up on MSU Inside Out. All American Trophies for all your screen printing and embroidery needs. Located on South Broadway. Art Main, women's clothing, accessories, and art supplies. Located at 13th Main Street, South Minot. Badlands Grill, featuring steak, seafood, chicken, pasta, and classic comfort food. At Badlands, everyone is welcome. Buffalo Wings and Rings, the sports restaurant experience where everyone is a VIP. B, W, and R goes way beyond just Buffalo Wings. Buffalo Wild Wings, wings, beer, and sports. Located on South Broadway across from Walmart. Center for Extended Learning, reaching across the state of North Dakota and beyond. The Minot State University Center for Extended Learning empowers you to choose your educational path. Digital Office Center, technology solutions for every business need. Located in Minot and Bismarck. El Azteca, authentic Mexican cuisine, fresh and fast. Beyonce Bridal, located in downtown Minot, and now you can shop online. Happy Joe's Pizza and Ice Cream. Good times to be together. iHeartMedia, providing multi-platform advertising and marketing opportunities for partners and world-class entertainment for listeners. Jacobson Music, a family-owned music business with three retail locations in Dickinson, Bismarck, and Minot. KCJB 910 AM, Minot's news and information station. KIZZ FM, Z94, Minot's only station for today's hit music. KRRZ 1390 AM, Minot's classic hits. KXMA, Mix 99.9, Minot's best music mix. KYYZ, FM 97 kicks today's hot new country. KZTR FM 105.3, The Fox, Minot's rock station. MSU Beaver Hockey, visit us online at msubeaverhockey.com or on Facebook and Twitter. MSU Athletics, NCAA Division II, promoting good character and a positive experience. Red Rising. MSU Art Department, stimulating creativity campus-wide by providing exhibits and art events. MSU's Theater Department, offering the highest quality of entertainment at Minot State. Enjoy. We'll see you at the theater. Midwest Oil Jobs brings employers, retailers, and other professionals from the Midwest to connect under one roof. Minot Plumbing, from winter chills through the dog days of summer. Our primary goal at Minot Plumbing and Heating is to keep your home comfortable for you and your family. Pepsi, the local Pepsi Cola bottling company serving the North Dakota areas in Minot, Dickinson, Devil's Lake, and Bottineau. Pita Pit, fresh thinking, healthy eating, located on South Broadway. Qdoba, easy, on time, full of flavor. Red Green, Minot State's official student run newspaper. Spicy Pie, pizza, grinders, beer, located at Beaver Ridge Plaza. Taco John's. 
offering fresh tacos, burritos, nachos, and breakfast, mixing Mexican and Western flavor. Watney Realtors, full-service real estate agencies handling residential, commercial, and investment properties. You can visit them online at MinotHomes.com. Watney Realtors, Cary Montoya, located on Northwest Broadway. Welcome back to MSU Inside. I'll be sure to visit um, the HPV pre presentation tonight at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. Tori's pop-up shop tomorrow. Mm -hmm. and, and also Keith Ailes presentation next week on Tuesday. Tuesday. Yes. Are you going to be visiting any of those? I th yes. Definitely I'm going to the HPV mm -hmm, presentation mm -hmm. and yeah. Tori's presentation. I'm not sure if I'll be here for Keith's own, mm -hmm. but... Yeah. Um, actually, I wasn't planning on going to the HPV presentation, but after hearing um, so, much about, so much about it, I think I'm definitely going to visit. And also, I'm definitely going to the pop-up shop because I'm going to go support Tori. Alrighty, Anthony, what do you have for us in sports? Uh, all the Beavers are on the road, but uh, hopefully they can get some wins. That's what I got for us. And we'll get right into it. The Minot State men's basketball team will have a doubleheader away from home this weekend. Before that, though, MSU kicked off conference play against their in-state rival, the University of Mary. It was a back-and-forth battle between the two teams with 10 lead changes, but in the end, the Marauders came out on top with an 81-72 victory. The Beavers will be on the road through the, though, first in Aberdeen on Friday to take on the Northern State University Wolves. Then the Beavers will head to Moorhead on Saturday to take on Minnesota State University Moorhead and another NSIC battle. Game times are set for the men at 8 and 6, and the men are 4 and 3 on the year, with junior forward Tyler Rudolph leading the team with 20 points a game and 9.9 .9 rebounds a game which is almost a double-double, considering that if he could get a double-double, uh, excuse me, a double-double every game, it would be amazing. The women's basketball team is also on the road, but first, they opened up NSIC play against the University of Mary. The Beavers were no match, though, as it was a big third quarter and won, uh, the Marauders had a big third quarter and won the game 67-54. The ladies will also be on the road First in Aberdeen to take on Northern State first at 6 on Friday. Then they travel to Moorhead to take on the Dragons of Minnesota State Moorhead Saturday at 4. Kari Clements leads the Beaver, the Lady Beavers with 13.9 points, while DeAndre Denton leads the team in rebounds with 5.9 a game. The ladies are 2-5 and five and looking to improve. Minot State Wrestling will be traveling to Montana for the weekend as they have three duels and an open tournament in Great Falls, Montana. The men first take on the number 8th ranked McKendry in the Argo duels. Then they face number 19th ranked Simon Fraser University. And then they finally finished up with number 4 ranked in the NAI, the Northern State University, uh, Montana State University, Northern. All duels happen on Friday. Then the men have a tournament on Saturday. The Beavers have had some injuries early on in the year and look to and we'll be looking at their freshmen to step up and make some splashes here in the duels. The Beavers have had success so far with three wrestlers winning individual titles in open in open tournaments. Ice sports are here. Jemis Biaceto has more about ice fishing. The weather has not been favorable for those who enjoy the unique fun of ice fishing. Temperatures have yet to dip below freezing, leaving some fishermen longing for last year's frigid temperatures. By this time last year, most fishermen were in full ice fishing mode, buying tackle and plenty of bait. Like sun up till about two hours after is when the birds usually go the best. And you can catch them throughout the day, but it's usually better. Apparently in the morning. The pastime of ice fishing is a unique pleasure many hope to experience. After Minot's latest snow, the waters are starting to cool down and are well on their way to freezing. Reporting for KMSU Channel 19, I'm Gemma Biaceto. Don't forget to wear extra layers that it is winter in North Dakota and that means it's very cold. 
The Minot stand, the, oh, excuse me. The Minot State men's hockey team is on the road in Colorado. The Beavers will be playing Colorado State first, where the puck drops at nine tonight. Then the Beavers play a doubleheader against the University of Colorado. Both games start at nine. The Beavers are 14-2 on the year and are now ranked number one in the nation once again, with Jeremy Johnson leading the team with nine goals. The women's hockey team is also on the road in Colorado. The girls are taking on the Buffaloes of the University of Colorado in a double header. Both games are set at five, and the Lady Beavers are three and four on the year. It will be a tough one for the Beavers, though, as the Buffaloes are ranked nationally, and the girls hope to get a win to try and be positive again in the win loss ratio. If you are a football fan, though, you should be excited about tonight, especially Vikings fans. As it is Thursday night football and the Vikings will be taking on the Cowboys. The Vikings are six and five and trying to get back on track after their hot start or after their hot start has been cooled off. The Cowboys haven't cooled off at all as Dallas is ten and one on the year. And Dak Prescott, who's a rookie quarterback by the way, but not playing like a rookie, is leading the way. Kickoff, kickoff is at seven twenty five PM and will be on NBC. Guys, that's all I have for sports on today. When you guys be watching uh, maybe some football tonight after your HPB conference or even uh, maybe tuning in to MSUBeavers.com and trying to see what the men and women are doing in basketball. I may watch the Vikings game. I'm kind of rooting for the Cowboys, though, so I don't want nobody to <laughs> target me, but definitely rooting for the Cowboys. So. Oh, nice. Thank you, Anthony. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, Ariel. Mm -hmm. It's snowing mm -hmm. i mean it's mine on and obviously it's snowing but mm -hmm. it's a lot of snow it's a lot of snow it's like there are mountains of snow <laughs> across campus exactly. if you have noticed that's like, crazy but it's a white christmas and it's something that i'm not used to growing up so i actually kind of like it yeah i really do I'm gonna go out and build a snowman something <laughs> something like that <laughs> we'll get some people get some friends get leaf maybe <laughs> maybe we'll see uh, like, how many and just i'm just curious okay i didn't i didn't look up the specifics but i had heard that there was 20 inches that fell wow and so when you have 20 inches fall and then you pile it all up, it makes a pretty big pile, like you were saying. Yeah, yeah. Also, right. if you noticed, I guess you weren't here, Autumn, but the first probably two or three inches that fell was wet, so it's very slushy and icy underneath oh, everything. everything. Mm -hmm. So those of you who are traveling, make sure that you watch the road, because as the snow is being uh, cleared, there's still a pretty good layer of ice underneath. When you get that slushy, wet snow that hits the ground, and then you get cold snow on top of it, it's going to freeze it underneath. Or oh. when they scoop that back off and it's still a little bit wet and then the air hits it, then it freezes, you know. Oh. Snow acts as a weird insulator. So that's, that's why we have like black ice all over mm. campus right. right now. I found right. out the hard way. I jumped out of the taxi from the airport, Ooh. <laughs> down into the snow, and I hit the black ice underneath the snow. Oh. Fell right down. So yes, yeah, so I found it's, out the hard way. And it's... And it was a weird snow because it was very wet. And usually this time of year, it starts to get a little bit, you know, drier, mm -hmm, dry out, mm -hmm, get a little bit dry mm -hmm. snow. It's going to be an odd winter. It's going to be really cold. And we're probably going to see lots of ice uh, oh. <laughs> as we go on. And, yeah. uh, you know, as I talk about that, let's head over to the Weather Center and see that uh, we have got 29 degrees out there. Actually pretty good. And uh, maybe it's cooled off a bit since the... Uh, Sun has gone down, but it feels like 25 degrees with the winds out of the north northeast at four miles per hour. So not too bad on the wind, still cloudy, and uh, be expecting the clouds to stick around for the long haul as we look into our weekend. As we see that on Friday, we're going to be the coldest place in the state at 24 degrees tomorrow for a high, 28 and 27, so looking around 30 degrees over in the west, but 29 and 34 over there in the Red River Valley. Clouds covering them, but they're going to stay warm, especially throughout the weekend when we look at Saturday and see that we're ha we have a chance for snow with 30 degree high, but not going to get too cold yet with 24 for the low. But cloud cover, mostly cloudy across the state. Again, staying warm over there in the Red River Valley of Grand Forks and Fargo. Going to be in the mid-30s, so they've got a lot to uh, look forward to. They can take that snow, pack it up, and throw snowballs at each other or something. I don't know, make a snowman. Sunday, though, we see that it's going to be 28 here, along with Bismarck being 28, but it's going to be sunny down there. So, uh, again, cloud cover except for Bismarck, and uh, over there in the east, they're continuing to stay warm, but mostly cloudy for them as well. 
and then we look into our extended forecast and see that things don't look so great if you don't like snow, but if you love the snow, it looks good. 23 on Monday for a high with some snow. It's not gonna snow on Wednesday, but come Tuesday, you guys, it's gonna get pretty cold. Uh, our overnight lows come to the end of next week. We're looking into uh, just the single digit negatives, but I know Autumn's not ready for it. I can see it in her face. <laughs> like, can you stop? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, enough information. I mean, if, if, but if you're from North Dakota, you're not super concerned with that yet. Yeah. Uh, it went, the only problem I can see, and I didn't look into it very hard, but is how the wind is going to be on those days. If it's mm -hmm. very windy, it's going to feel uh, much, much colder, colder than one below mm -hmm. or three below. So make sure you bundle up next week and uh, keep the uh, the the snow off of you and, and, and I'm, I'm losing my words but hot chocolate and soup excellent time of year for that finally mm -hmm. I know Kayla and I uh, he, my roommate we're gonna probably have some uh, chili or soup coming up in the next few days mm -hmm. since we've got a whole cupboard for of it I know our director <laughs> has some plans some snuggle Snuggle oh yeah, he plans. yeah. <laughs> Other direct, yeah, Quinn's got some uh, snuggle weather time. Take that how you'd like it, but well, that's listen, the weather. After school, I'm heading out of here. <laughs> <laughs> if you can get out of here. Now leave. I'm, okay. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to stop. No, you you'll make it. You'll be fine. <laughs> you need you to stop right away. <laughs> so since now it's the end of November, it is the end of No Shave November, and our content, uh, our contenders. Please come on stage so we can show our audience. Exactly. So I think that we have, uh, it wasn't much so difficult to choose a winner this time <laughs> around. So Leaf is the winner. Definitely the win winner here. And uh, the loser. Someone's a bit bitter about it. But <laughs> the loser okay. is the, the one looking the most bitter on stage. The, the baby face lane. And the it's loser okay. has to buy the winner a pizza. So. Pizza. so if you want some free pizza, make sure to look out for Leaf, Leaf Bakken. I'll give out some pizza. I, I, can't, I can't eat a whole pizza by myself. I might have these guys. I'm not going to have Lane help me. He's buying it. Yeah, he's buying it. He just watch me eat. <laughs> watch me eat this pizza. Yeah. All right. Check out nice. that. Check like, out that. Check out that beard. 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 I like how it's like connected to his hair, you know, like the sideburns and the mustache <laughs> connect. You know, I mean, I, he is the clear Final winner clear. of this competition. Clear, yes, definitely the clear. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for guys. joining us. Yes. Thank you so much for a wonderful year here on MSU Inside Out. Yes. It's been a great year. We have a lot on the show. Um, we had a great cast. Thank you so much for tuning in and make sure to tune in next semester. So the song of the week is... And don't forget to, uh, to tune in for next week's KMSU auction. December 8th is the date. December 8th. And it's going to begin at 6.30 p.m. all the way till midnight. We have a lot of stuff. There is... Yes, 6.30 p.m. Um, the auction will start and it will go all the way till midnight. And we have a lot of stuff. We have a lot of holiday packages. We have Medora packages. We have a gel fireplace that's really cool. And if you have time, the pre-show starts at 5.30. So you can also feel free to turn on your television early before the show starts. Yes, absolutely. All right, so the song of the day is Wobble by VIC. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. I love this song. I really like this song. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I heard this song before. Right. I heard this song you have, before. You heard the song before. You just don't. I you just, just don't remember. Just don't know right. the no, night seriously, song. No, seriously. <laughs> if you didn't hear the song before, you are just like, you are well, so sure. I'm almost a hundred percent certain you heard the song. Yeah. What does it sound like? Oh. Oh.